morning students welcome to our online class this is regarding to third semester c18 e304 electrical and electronics measuring instrument subject and courtesy to all authors who are shared their valuable materials in the internet and special thanks to ng prasuna the senior lecturer government polytechnic visakhapatnam she is help in preparation of ppt now let us come to our topic what are the objectives to this session on completion of this period you would be able to know the working of a single phase induction type energy meter in previous class we have seen that different type of the energy meters constructions in analog point of view so we have seen that the energy meter consisting of mainly four systems one is a driving system moving system braking system and recording system how the driving system is developed arranged so we know that by using the two magnets m1 and m2 electromagnets so we are going to produce a driving mechanism due to this driving force one another system is required that is a moving system in moving system there is a aluminum disc is provided on a spindle due to the driving system the moving system will moves or rotates once it rotated so we need quite to stop the device the deflecting torque is produced with the help of the driving system due to the driving system the moving system arranges the aluminum disc we rotates so we are going to control the rotation of aluminum disc with the help of braking system for this purpose I have used two permanent magnets at opposite diamagnetically diagrammatically are placed on opposite sides. So by adjusting the, the magnets the speed of the aluminum disc will change. Okay so this number of rotations of aluminum disc is connected to a recording system where it will record for a particular duration of time so this all driving system moving system braking system and recording system so we have seen in details in previous classes okay now let us see the in this class we are going to see the operation of single phase induction energy meter now we can observe here how the torque which causes moving system to rotate from initial position so what is this one this is the energy meter we have seen inside it has a four driving systems if open this cover so we are going to get it what are the parts inside of a energy meter Okay, so that can be drawn in a circuit diagram. Okay, here is the two electromagnets. This is a M1 and M2. We have seen in between aluminum disc. So everything is provided. Let us open this disc. What will happen? You can see. Now this is the internal port of system. Okay. So what are the systems here? So you can observe. This is the first 
the recording system this is the we can take the, the color so this is the recording system and you can observe there is a magnet is provided here so you can see here nearby this is a u shaped magnet here so this is the braking system and the moving system is the this is the aluminum disc you can observe here and driving system here is a one magnets provided the bottom that is a series magnet m1 and the here is the one shunt magnet that is the m2 okay so this can be drawn in a circuit diagram okay so now we'll see one one by one in details okay as already you have seen driving system this electromagnets m1 m2 the moving system consists of one linear disc and the braking system two permanent magnets and recording system warm and warm wheel arranged okay so now you can see the uh, details in circuit diagram okay now the mechanism of electro -mech electro mechanical induction meter so induction meter means it works only on ac so if you open the cover of single phase energy meter you can observe this thing and the equivalent circuit diagram is this one okay clearly you can observe it so what is here so it has the so this is a phase this is a meter from the phase supply the current is passing here some of the current is flowing here some of the current is flowing okay now what will happen the current is passing through this coil pc coil and is going to here connected some here. okay this is connected here now same current is passing also through this coil and this coil and if it comes to below to here flow is connected is connected here. that means this is the m1 series coil series magnet electromagnet this is a shunt magnet you can see the it is connected in parallel this is a m2 okay so here in between i provided the one aluminum disc at the same time i place the l permanent magnet okay so everything is here now so what is the mechanism do in energy meter induction type energy meter so instead of this one we can see the our circuit diagram so this is the one clearly circuit diagram what is it so you have already have seen that it has a two magnets m1 and m2 okay so what is the here this is equal m1 this is equal m2 okay so two magnets consists these are the made up of one is the voltage coil another is the current coil m2 here m2 is the this coil okay what about this coil you can see the m2 electromagnet we can say this is the voltage coil voltage coil all of you have seen in previous class the voltage coil may many tons of fine wire encased in plastic connected in parallel with the load so it is wire consist of more number of tons but the area of the cross section of the wire is very thin okay very thin more number of tons but thin wire so that is known as the m2 and it is connected parallel to the supply voltage okay now coming to the m coming to the m1 now we can see this one m1 
so that what is the m1 m1 is the current coil current okay so m1 is the current coil where is this one so you can see this is a current coil what is the purpose of this one it has a very few turns but the thickness of the wire is very very large so thickness the thickness is more okay so generally three turns of thick wire connected in series with the load you can see here connected with the load load is this one is connected here okay so the it has a voltage coil it will measure the voltage it has a current coil it will measure the current okay at the same time it has also stator the concentrates and uh, confine the magnetic fields in between the stator and rotor if the stator is the two magnets this is the one magnet and this is the another magnet this is stator at rotor this is this one okay and at the same time it also consists of the aluminum disc okay so aluminum rotor a disc at the same time it also rotor braking magnets the braking magnets you can see is the brake magnet permanent magnet is provided to control produce the braking torque here m1 and m2 produces deflecting torque and whereas the the permanent magnet is producing controlling torque okay now spindle with the warm and gear also provided to record the values okay so these are the some parts of a single phase induction energy meter so display dials the uh, note that so when it may be different values 1 by 10th 10th and 1000 dials rotate clockwise while the 1 and 100 and 10000 dials rotate the counter clockwise so this is a different error mechanism is provided to continue record this all values that means if the disk is rotated for example 2400 revolutions for 1 hour or you can see the 1 unit that means the disk is rotating when it's completed 2400 times then it recorded as a 1 unit so it will stops 1 unit okay different energy meters having the different rating this constant meter constant some meters may be 1400 rpm only so that means no, 1400 rotations 1400 rotations it makes one unit okay different energy meters has a different uh, have a different meter constants okay so this are already you know this thing now what is that one so it has a voltage coil the many tons of fine wire the encased in a plastic connected in parallel with the load so pressure coil always connected in parallel the current coil it has a very few turns maybe three turns of the thick wire connected in series with the load output terminals and the state up and concentrates the and confines the magnetic field in a such a direction and fourth one is the aluminum the rotor disc also presents inside and to produce the rotation driving force driving system and another is the rotor braking magnet also provided to control the the rotation of aluminum disc okay so these are the different parts presents inside a disc now let us see the basic principle of energy meter what is the basic principle in induction instrument the deflection torque is produced due to the reaction between the 
flux of an AC magnet and eddy currents induced in a metal disc. So here what is happened? Here the, the deflecting torque, what are the? The deflecting torque is required to rotate the disc is directly proportional to the, so what is that? Interaction of the M1 and M2, two magnets produces the current of I1 and I2 in a aluminum disc. Due to this interaction, there is a deflection torque produced in the energy meter. So, these instruments are used only for AC purpose because induction means AC purpose. Okay. So, what is the main basic thing? So, as we know that the basic principle of energy meter is uh, when a three-phase energy when the energy meter is connected in the circuit, the current coil carries the load current, whereas the pressure coil carries the current proportional to the voltage because it is connected in parallel. The eddy currents are induced in the disc due to this flux established by the series and shunt magnet causing a, a driving force which results the disc to rotate in the air gap. Okay, so the braking torque is produced by the braking magnet and by adjusting the, the position of this magnet, the desired speed for a unit can be obtained. Okay, so let us um, draw one figure. You can easily understand this basic principle. Okay, so let us see. So these two don't confuse. So what is happening here? So, what is that? So, construction part of the unit. Okay. What is the construction here? Now, what has happened? Here, what are the this is the output of the energy meter. Now if you enter inside, so what is it consist? So here what are the value? So it has the one upper magnet also made of the silicon steel and laminated core okay it has a lower magnet similar to this one so we can say this is the one m1 coil this is this is a m1 this is a m2 so here m m2 coil is, is known as the there is a winding is wound on this winding So winding is worn here and here what is happened so two phases this is a phase this is a neutral okay the phase and neutral is coming the phase is one this is a neutral so this phase what are the phases coming here this is a neutral phase a neutral and the phase wire is connected to this one okay and sub the required we will connect it to this what will happen so what about the pressure coil it has a large number of tons a thin wire connected across the supply voltage input voltage okay now take the same this is the supply and connect here and connect here and you connect the throw our load for example take the different loads electrical load you can take it. Okay, it is connected to the neutral now save. What is happen? 
so now what about the current entered here so this some of the current is flowing here some of the current is flowing so this current will flows and circuit is closed and coming this one this one that's why always voltage presents across the pressure coil pc okay then it will this it produces the some flux the flux is directly proportional to voltage of this coil okay so due to this one what will happen the flux always lagged by the voltage nearly 90 degree suppose voltage be here the flux of this will produce let us assume this flux produced with a phi 2 the phi 2 is this one so here 90 degrees the displacement between the voltage and the flux that means the flux lagged by 90 degrees if not 90 degrees we can forcefully will make with help of shading ring already we have seen okay so we are providing the one shading ring here by adjusting the moment upper and lower side so we are going to make it the displacement between the voltage and produce flux 90 degrees okay now coming to the lower side now once again suppose all loads are opened here then what is where what will happen suppose this current is coming coming is coming here is circuit is open no current is flowing then no flux is produced in the m1 then what will happen so i provided here one aluminum disc okay aluminum disc is provided here so what are the flux coming from the phi to links with the aluminum disc but here m1 flux is zero because no current flowing through the current coil okay then so no rotation of disc no recording of the our reading values 1 2 3 values okay suppose i close the one load small one bulb is connected then what will happen the current circuit will close okay the current is closed the current is passing through this coil is so proportional to the this resistance load let us assume this current is may be small i1 current is the i1 current is flowing proportionate flux also produced at this limb that flux i can say this is a 51 that means if the flux 51 is produced based on the current in series coil okay so if the load is more more current will flows less current less current will flows so based on this one flux also produced now this flux and current are in phase suppose for example i1 this direction flux also this direction so here the current and flux are in phase whereas in the pressure co voltage coil the flux and voltage is the quadrature each other okay now due to this one what will happen in this condition phi1 also going to upper side and phi2 coming this side and what will happen so this flux is two fluxes links with the aluminum disc at the same time the flux produced phi1 and phi2 are ac nature alternating nature due to this one as per faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so it emf induced in the disc so aluminum disc is a, what is happen the flux is coming this is the aluminum disc okay so what is happen here the flux is coming the phi2 this direction and phi1 this direction and it links with the this one and this fluxes are changing time ac fluxes due to this one it the flux produced due to this one it produced the phi2 current at voltage that is a e2 voltage and due to the phi1 e1 voltage eddy current is produced in the aluminum disc the aluminum disc is a totally is a conductor what about the e1 what are the e2 produces the current will flows in the this one that's why the aluminum disc instantly produces a i1 and i2 in disc itself so this i1 i2 and phi1 phi2 interaction takes place then there is a torque is produced deflecting torque is produced in the disc 
now the disc is provided on a spindle some bearings pressure bearings then the disc will rotate in what direction okay so what is happened here when the flux the supply is given to this one the voltage curl produces the phi 2 and that links with the aluminum disc at the same time if the load is connected in current coil the current also pro showing through the lower magnet then it produces a flux that is a phi 1 this phi 1 also links with the aluminum discs due to the phi 1 from the lower magnet phi 2 from the upper magnet it induces a emf in the aluminum disc thereby i1 and i2 currents are produced in the aluminum disc due to the interaction of the permanent magnet that is the electromagnets of m1 m2 and currents produced in the aluminum disc there is a deflecting torque is produced due to the deflecting torque the rotor will rotates here disc will rotate in one direction so this is the basic principle of energy meter okay so what we have seen here so when the energy meter is connected to the supply the current coil carries the load current when load is closed whereas the the pressure coil carries the current proportional to the voltage because it is connected in parallel these two fluxes try to produce the eddy currents in aluminum disc and thereby the flux interaction between the phi 1 and phi 2 and i 1 i 2 in the disc there is a driving force is developed the driving force try to rotate the aluminum disc in one direction okay so the speed of this aluminum disc is controlled by using our brake magnets provided here okay so how we are going to control already we have seen previous class by moving the the permanent magnets the this inner side and outer side we are going to change the adjust the speed of the aluminum disc okay so this is the basic operation of energy meter okay so let us see that one so here in induction instrument the deflection torque tt is produced due to the reaction between the flux of an ac magnet m1 m2 and eddy currents induced in the metal disc okay and so these instruments are used only for ac purpose only okay now let us see here you can see the water so here what is where is this one this is known as the pressure m2 pressure coil this is known as the m1 current coil okay pressure coil is connected voltage this measure the current it will measure the current okay so now the pressure coil carries the current proportional to the supply voltage and current coil carries the load <coughs> say this magnet produces the flux phi 1 you can see here <coughs> Okay, pressure coil carries the current proportional to the supply voltage. If voltage is more, we know that single phase supply. What is the single phase voltage? So 230 volts plus R minus 10 percentage. If the voltage is more, more flux will produce. Flux voltage is less, then less flux will produce. Okay, that is the <coughs> depend upon the supply voltage. Next, the current coil carries the load current. The series magnet produces a flux phi 1 in phase with the load current. Shunt magnet produces the flux which lags behind the 
voltage by 5 2. So already you have seen that. What is that one? So phi 1 at an angle of so phi 1 this is a phi 1 flux produced with the current coil in phase with the current. So what is happen? The current and flux or in phase both are same direction. Whereas the phi 2 pressure coil and current the flux the volt that is a current the flux produced and voltage or displaced by 90 degrees okay so this is the meaning the major portion of flux produced by shunt magnet crosses the narrow gap between the center and the side limbs okay the small amount of flux the, that is useful flux passes through the uh, disc these two fluxes induces the emfs e1 and u2 in the uh, disc they also produce circulatory eddy currents i1 and i2 in the disc the interaction between these fluxes and eddy currents produces driving torque which makes the disc to rotate the braking torque is produced by braking magnet by adjusting the position of these magnets desired speed for a unit can be obtained the control springs here the control sp spring fixed to spindle provided a controlling torque also so dear students you can see here what has happened here this is the voltage coil and this is the current coil and in between there is a disc is provided once the load is connected here the current passing through the current coil it produces a flux and at the same time voltage coil also produces its own flux this flux comes towards the down and this flux goes out towards up during this process it links with the aluminum disc here you can see the aluminum disc is a conductor and the flux phi 1 and phi 2 are the alternating in nature due to the Faraday's loss of electromagnetic induction and emf induced in the disc that emf is known as the eddy currents e1 eddy current produced due to the phi 1 u2 e2 the eddy current produced due to the phi 2 and this phi e1 and u2 also produces its own i1 and i2 due to the the conductor is a closed path the current is also produces and due to this i1 and i2 and phi 1 and phi 2 there is a deflecting torque is produced the deflecting torque try to rotate the disc in one direction the speed of the disc is depend upon the, the load current if the load current is more the rotation also more speed and this driving torque always opposed by the controlling torque the speed of this disc is a May, may be controlled with the help of the braking magnet by inserting braking magnet the aluminum is a conductor and it cuts the permanent magnet and it induces its own flux and that try to oppose cause of its production that is the speed will reduce okay by inserting the so this case here so first case we are placing the aluminum magnet here so in second case if here by providing the magnet here so what will happen so here 
more flux linked here so more breaking torque takes place here less breaking torque by adjusting this moment of permanent magnets and opposite direction so we can control the we can adjust the speed as per our requirement that is with the help of the rss meter what is rss meter so rotary substandard meter which can be used to calculate the energy meter in the bench okay now you can see the some vectorial what is this one the the mean driving torque the deflecting torque is directly proportional to the pressure coil and current coil and phase angle between these two that is the sin alpha that is called td deflecting torque is directly proportional to v into i into sin alpha where is the alpha you can see the alpha in between so flux phi 1 and phi flux phi 2 okay you can see the vector diagram here so this is the flux you can see the what is this one this is the alpha between the here what is this one this is the phi 1 and this is a t1 you can see here this is a phi you take in the phi 2 here this is the phi 1 in between angle is the alpha okay so at the same time you can observe that the phi 1 the flux lagged by the v1 by the phi angle you can see here a reference okay at the same time phi 1 and e1 so 90 degrees each other you can see this is a 90 degrees okay so at the same time you can see the simple vector diagram from this vector diagram we can write it's the deflecting torque so directly proportional to the v into i into sin alpha so sin alpha can be written as a 90 minus phi okay that is our directly proportional to the v into i into sin 90 minus phi so sin 90 is called cos alpha so we are going to that get it v into i into cos phi that is equal to td that is equal to what will happen so this is another good power that is known as a ac power so that means the deflecting torque is directly proportional to ac power okay so you can see here So alpha is the angle between the maximum flux produced by the two magnets, the shunt magnet and series magnet, phi 1 and phi 2. Then deflecting torque is directly proportional to the V into I into sin alpha, then V into I into sin alpha, we can write it 90 minus phi phase angle. So sin 90 minus phi is called cos alpha, then V into I into cos alpha. So that is a cos phi is nothing but power factor. So V into I into cos phi is nothing but AC power. That means the deflecting torque is directly proportional to the AC power. Okay. So this is the diagram with respect to the vector diagram. Now coming to the uh, breaking torque. The breaking torque of the magnet is proportional to speed of TP. If more rotation more cutting of the flux and more breaking takes place okay so breaking torque of the magnet is proportional to the speed so that means the breaking torque is directly proportional to the speed n the disc attains a steady speed n when two torques are equal so what are the one is the breaking torque is equal to the deflecting torque that means con deflecting torque equal to the controlling torque then the speed is maintained in steady state. Therefore, the speed of the disc is directly proportional to the AC power. What is the AC power? That is equal n is directly proportional to V into I into cos phi. n is proportional to the AC power. If AC power is more, more speed will rotate the disc. Okay, that is depend upon the our consumption okay so 
these are the single phase energy meter working operation okay so this is a very simple dear students okay let us summarize what you have seen in this session first one is a series magnet produces so what you have seen so before that one so once again i am going to explain it here it has a two magnets okay then this is the electromagnets this is known as a magnet one electromagnet it is also made out of the silicon steel with the laminations and it has a another shunt magnet placed here in between we provided the one aluminum disc okay now here there is a one electromagnets also provided here sorry permanent magnet issue permanent magnet okay now this is the core material now what are the phase supply comes it is given to the winding and here connected to the some you can see the connected to the bulb load and this is coming to the neutral okay phase and neutral it is connected to the this one way. suppose you take the one switch also now at the same time so voltage it is also taken to the this coil okay connected to the neutral so that means this is a m1 electromagnet m2 electromagnet so what about the current is passing here directly proportional to the voltage so due to this current i2 current it produces a flux of 5 2 and the same time when the switch is closed the current also passing through this coil and it produces the flux of 5 1 okay so this 5 2 flux is depend upon voltage and phase angle between the phi and v is equal 90 degrees linearly that purpose i can use the one shading ring in the center line by adjusting the shading ring i can get the exactly 90 degrees displacement between the the flux and voltage similarly here the current is passing through the current coil and due to the i1 it produces the flux phi1 and this flux phi1 in phase with current i1 okay so here the flux one is in phase that is also depend upon the current if the i1 current is more more flux will produce but in phase with the i1 now the phi2 and phi1 so links with the aluminum disc and it produces the eddy currents e1 and u e2 with the help of this phi1 and phi2 the aluminum disc is a common material and this is a conducting material it is a closed path one it produces i1 produces the current i1 and e2 produces the i2 current on a disc due to the interaction of i1 the phi1 and i2 and phi2 and i1 there is a deflecting torque is produced inside the mean mechanism so the deflecting torque is produced that will try to rotate the disc in one direction so this is known as a deflecting torque this is a working of energy meter okay so this is the basic idea now in summary we have seen that 
series magnet produces a flux phi1 in phase with the load current i the shunt magnet produces a flux phi2 which lags beyond the voltage by 90 degrees these two fluxes induce emf in the disc which produce a eddy currents i1 and i2 the interaction between the fluxes and eddy currents produces a driving force which makes the disc will rotate in between two magnets and this rotation of speed can be controlled with help of permanent magnet placed at the corner okay this is a basic idea of operation of single phase energy meter analog term okay dear students please practice the figure and remaining things is very easy okay thank you for listening my class